Welcome back to the Green Means Go channel. It's your host, me. And today we are just spitballing, free firing on the NBA draft. That was last night, believe it or not, because I got an alert from ESPN five minutes before the draft. And I said, wait, the draft is tonight? That is how unhyped this whole event was. And I pride myself in being someone who keeps up on all things sports. And you're going to say, oh, this guy doesn't know ball. He didn't know the NBA draft was on last night. You couldn't name five players in the NBA draft last night. You know why? Because this is the worst NBA draft of my lifetime, and I will stand on that. As far as hype going in, as far as talent in this first round, and as far as I see potential in the NBA for the next 10 years, okay? I mean, this this is abysmal. I would rather talk about the WNBA than talk about this. Caitlin Clark is bringing more people to a sport of basketball than any of these dudes combined, all right? Let's just start there. This is pathetic. All right, and I'm going to blame the setup a little bit. I I mean, what am I supposed to do when three of the top five picks did not play college ball? The March Madness Tournament is probably the most hyped sporting event on earth, and three of your top five prospects did not participate in it. Um, That's a problem for the sport of basketball, in my opinion. And and maybe that makes me... um, too sheltered or too naive, but I don't care what France is doing on the basketball court. Yeah, we know about Victor Wimbignano. We saw him excel this year. People knew about him going into the draft, but the top two picks this year were Frenchmen. And I don't know a thing about these guys, and I don't have time. And the casual NBA fan, even the the semi-committed NBA fan, doesn't have time to follow French basketball to know who's coming over to the NBA. It's bizarre. All right, so we'll start there. The top two picks were French guys, and I know nothing about them. They go to the Hawks, a small forward, and they go to the Washington Wizards, a power forward. And I, quite frankly, do not care. I'll watch them, okay? I'll I'll take a look and see what they bring to the table. But right now, I I am so uninterested, it's not even funny. Can't even pronounce their names. One of them I can, Alex Saar. That's pretty easy. Let's talk about pick number three, because I may face some backlash here. And, and you may get in the chat, you may get in the comments and say, this guy doesn't know ball, which is everyone on the internet's favorite phrase to say about someone talking about sports. I've learned when I were doing this full time now. It's just, if anybody, instead of, instead of actually posing a counter argument, it's just, you don't know ball. Okay, we'll explain why. Tell me what I need to know ball about for me to, to continue to grow my basis and my brand. You don't know ball. Okay. Let's talk about Reed Shepard. Reed Shepard is a six foot two shooting guard from Kentucky, freshman. So here's my problem. Um, I, I will come out and say I believe that Reed Shepard is vastly overrated. He played in the SEC, which is a football conference. Don't start with this, oh, SEC is strong in basketball. Are they? Is the SEC strong in basketball? They had what, eight teams? In the tournament, how many made it to the Sweet 16? I believe two, Alabama, and uh, there was one more that I can't remember offhand. Okay, Kentucky didn't even make the Sweet 16. Two top 10 picks. They didn't make the Sweet 16. I mean, Reed Shepard, sure. You want to look at his averages? They're fine for a college guard. Shoots the ball well, sure. But for a six foot two freshman at Kentucky who can't even lead his team, to a Sweet 16 in the men's Division I basketball tournament to be taken in the top three of the NBA draft is an abomination to the sport of basketball, all right? And a lot of people are going to look at Zach Eady and they're going to say, how dare he go top 10? Zach Eady going top 10 is absurd. I think Reed Shepard going at three is more absurd than Zach Eady going at 10. I also do not quite understand the pick in terms of team it's not like reed shepherd is going to matter to the rockets right now and i mean that in the nicest way possible he is going to be by and large a bench guy he's not going to start over fred van fleet at point guard and he's certainly not going to play shooting guard uh as as far as i can see it right away in the nba he's small okay um and that will change, I'm sure. He's not going to grow any. He's not going to get taller, but I think he could probably put on 10 to 15 pounds. Um, I'm worried about this pick. And 
people, again, going back to Kentucky, this is a team in Kentucky, and, and if you want to point to his Kentucky numbers, fine. But my counter argument to his outstanding Kentucky numbers are looking at Kentucky's schedule. If you look at the Ken Palm rankings, all right, their strength of schedule was somewhere in the 70s. Okay, their defensive strength of schedule, the teams they played, how their defenses stacked up in the NCAA were high 70s. This guy wasn't playing in the Big Ten, okay? I'll just say it, all right? The Big Ten is one of the, if not the toughest basketball conference, all right? This guy was playing, I would argue, a pretty soft schedule with Kentucky. And sure, he played well, but I just do not think he is going to come into the NBA and be what you expect a top three pick to be. Now, if this would have been a second round pick, middle of the pack role player, I'm not saying I'm not I'm not spending five minutes talking about this. This is a guy who, as a, as a third round NBA pick, you expect to come in and be a superstar, legacy type, uh, dominant player. Okay, who who's he going to guard to? He's not, he's not, he's not guarding anybody in the NBA. I'm sorry. Uh, And I watched him in the tournament. He struggled. He looks bad. I mean, borderline abysmal in the tournament. I predict that Reed Shepard averages 12, three and and four for the foreseeable future in this league. Not impressed. Not impressed at all with Reed Shepard. Okay. Stefan Castle goes four, Ron Holland. Another Frenchman goes six. Can't even begin to, 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 to try that. To Jane Saloon, going to croissant, brother. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Donovan Klingen, um, a center. UConn moving down to the eighth pick. Rob Dillingham. I think his ceiling is higher than Reed Shepard, and I realize that what I said about Reed Shepard being small, undersized, weak defensively, can be uh, copied and pasted to Rob Dillingham, and I fully accept that. But. Rob Dillingham finds himself on a team of players who can play defense and who can build him up. He also, I think, has a higher ceiling in terms of weight, muscle, you know, strength to gain than Reed Shepard does. So I I just think Rob Dillingham, his ceiling is higher than Reed's. The teammates he's around will be better than Reed's. So I'm actually quite impressed with Minnesota getting that pick. And I would argue that Dillingham should have gone before Reed Shepard, but that's for another video. Okay, Zach Eady. Let's talk about him. Because you tell me he goes top 10 before the draft starts, and I wonder what kind of inside information you have. I laugh in your face. I wonder if you took your meds this morning. That's absurd. I don't believe Zach Eady will be someone that the NBA... Uh, respects, admires, and fears in the next half decade. Obviously, he was dominant at Purdue. But when NBA teams have a seven-footer they can stick on him, when they have a seven-footer that can space the floor on offense and make him come out of the paint, I, I'm curious to see what Zach Eady is made of because those are the things that he did not have to face at Purdue for four years. When you take a guy like Zach Eady and say, you can stay in the paint all day long, of course he's going to excel. But when you change the game a little bit for him, it's going to be interesting to see how he adapts. Now, here's the positive. I think that him going to Memphis is best case scenario. And I'll put that in air quotes, okay? Jaron Jackson Jr., as we know, defensive player of the year within the last three years, can space the floor, can guard multiple positions, him slotted in at the four, Zach Eady at the five, changes some things. Now Jaron Jackson can space the floor and guard the five who may pull out to the three-point line. Okay, guard the guard the four, guard the five who has a little bit more ball handling and vision. Okay, the Jokic's, the Embiid's, that kind of thing. Zach Eady would be eaten alive by Jokic, by Joel Embiid. I mean, you see some of the best players in the world eaten alive by them. So Zach Eady is going to be no different. He's going to be much worse. But I do believe that Zach Eady is in one of the best circumstances league-wide that he could have been in for this pick. So I think he fits the system of Memphis. 
And for that, I'm okay with him going top 10. So we'll call that a wash. We'll skip down to pick 12, uh, Nikola Topic. There's only one Nikola in the league, in my opinion. Okay, I'm, I'm tired of these Nikolas. Let's get him out. There's only room for one Nikola in the league, and it's not this guy. Uh, they, they, they get rid of Josh Giddy. They bring in Alex Caruso. Now they got another young point guard. Is he going to be the point guard off the bench? Most likely. Um, Caruso maybe can play shooting guard. We'll see how it works. Uh, it's fine with fine with me. Skipping down to the Sixers, we got Jared McCain, who a lot of people are going to hate on just because he paints his nails. But I think he really picked it up in the conference and the NCAA tournament and was one of the only guys that Duke was relying on, especially when Filipowski went missing. Um, speaking of missing, not drafted in the first round. So um, stop being a little crybaby and paint your nails and maybe things will turn around for you. Uh, I like Jared McCain. I think Jared McCain will bring something to the Sixers. And he reminds me a little bit of Tobias Harris anyway, a more aggressive Tobias Harris. So I think it'll be interesting. I think it'll be fine for that team. I think it'll be good for that team. Dalton Connect goes at 17. Another guy whose ceiling I think is tremendously high. Um, and I think will be great off the bench. We'll learn from LeBron. I think that's a good pick for them. Uh, you know, I think he's got raw talent, so I think that's fine. Um, and then looking down towards the bottom, I think the, the most impressive pick, the pick that we have to acknowledge is Terrence Shannon Jr. I will go on record right now at 1227 on June 27th, 2024. And say that of the players taken in this first round, in five years, 2029, Terrence Shannon Jr. will be, pound for pound, the best player of this first round. I believe it. I believe Terrence Shannon has the most raw talent of anyone on this list. Now, I admit it, I don't know anything about these French players. And they could come in and be and be wimby light and just stroke that thing to the buzzer sounds, okay? But Terrence Shannon Jr. is, is the player I was most impressed with this year in college basketball. And of course, you have the off-field stuff, which, um, you know, he was found not guilty, and, and maybe that plays into his stock, but I find it bizarre that he fell that far. The Memphis, sorry, the Minnesota Timberwolves won this draft, in my opinion, so far. You get two of, of the most raw, talented, maybe underdeveloped guys who have a high ceiling in Rob Dillingham and Terrence Shannon Jr. To couple with a team that made the Western Conference Finals. Watch out for Minnesota, okay? Watch out for Minnesota. I think Terrence Shannon Jr. and this team will be tremendous. Outside of that, I'm just, <laughs> I don't know. This draft will go down in history, in my eyes, as one of the most pathetic first rounds. I think in five years, you're going to look at this list and you're going to laugh. And you're going to say, there are three guys who are still relevant. Okay? That's my opinion. Take it or leave it on the Green Means Go channel. All we do is speak what we feel. We speak our truth. And we let everything else fall where it may. Thank you for coming by. Drop your comments in the comments. And if you say you don't know Bull, at least tell me why. We'll see you next time.